Mexico is world famous for its food and culture, but by now I'm sure we've all heard the scary stories too. After all, there is literally a Mexican holiday called the Day of the Dead. People there know the stories. I've seen many of you in the comments who are from Mexico asking for me to share more because they're just so good. I totally agree, and that's why we are back today. My name is Danny Burke, and this is the Top 10 Scary Mexican Urban Legends, Part 2. Starting off at number 10 now, we have La Llorona. The story goes like this. Once upon a time, in a Mexican village, there lived a young woman called Maria. Her family was poor, but she was known for her beauty. One day, a rich nobleman was travelling through her village, but stopped in his tracks when he saw Maria. He was so charmed by her beauty that he proposed to her immediately. She accepted, the wedding was planned, even though the nobleman's father was disappointed that his son was marrying into poverty. Maria and her new husband built a house in the village, and eventually she gave birth to two twin boys. Her husband was always travelling, but returned when he could, until one day, he never came home. A while later, as Maria and her boys were walking by, by a river, she saw a familiar carriage with a younger, beautiful woman next to her husband. Maria flew into a jealous rage. She was so angry at seeing her husband cheating on her that she picked up her two boys and flung them into the river. By the time she came around, their bodies were floating in the river face down. She then jumped in, hoping to also drown and be with her kids. Now, they say her soul is attached to the land, unable to pass on because of her grief and the murder of her two little boys. People say if you hear her cries, then misfortune or evil even death is just around the corner. If you're a child, you must be extra careful. She is always attracted to children, hoping they are actually hers. She will try and drown them to be with her children. Kids must never walk alone by the river unless they too want to meet the same fate. Moving on to number nine now, we have El Sombreron. In some parts of Mexico, people swear this mysterious creature exists. Its name roughly translates to the goblin in English. He goes around wearing a huge dark hat and dresses entirely in black, except for his ornamental boots and belt. He preys on the young, especially girls. El Sombreron has an obsession with braiding hair. He often braids the manes and tails of horses, or if there are none about, he braids the hair of dogs. People see the animals with their hair braided like this. They know the goblin is somewhere nearby. When he can't find the animals, he follows young women with large eyes and long hair. He arrives in town with a pack of mules, and when he finds a woman that he likes, he ties up his mules and serenades her with a silver guitar. After enchanting her back to his home, he said to serve them dirt for dinner, which makes them unable to sleep. The legend goes that a young girl named Susanna was admiring the moon and stars from her balcony one night when she was approached and serenaded by the goblin with the big hat. Her parents were worried and upset by their daughter being out so late, and so they forced her to come inside. The goblin returned every night though, making it impossible for her to sleep. When her parents tried to feed her, she'd always find dirt in her food. Her parents eventually cut the girl's hair and had it blown by a priest. Suddenly, the Earl Sombreron had no interest in her, and the visits just stopped. He moved on to search for his next victim, and they say he continues his journey even today. Moving on to number 8 now, we have The Vanishing Hitchhiker. This is an old story burned into the memory of many Mexicans. One night in November, many years ago, a taxi driver called Pedro Ramirez was heading for the town of Cazones. It was a warm night, but every now and again, Pedro felt a quick snap of cold. Then, on the dark road, a girl stopped him to ask for help. She said that bad people wanted to harm her, and so they sped away from the area together. She said her name was Martha, and that her parents were the owners of the ranch where he had just picked her up from. He took her to Cazones and left her at the house that she wanted to go to. Martha was very grateful, and invited him to spend the day with her some time. Pedro took her up on this offer, and returned a few days later. He knocked on the door of the house. An elderly woman came to the door. He asked for Martha, and explained how they met. The old woman smiled, and said that Martha was her daughter, who had been been assassinated 10 years before by drug dealers outside of her husband's ranch. The woman was smiling because this wasn't the first time Martha's ghost had done this. Still, Pedro didn't quite believe her. She invited him in, and there in the living room was a very old photo of Martha, looking just like she had the other night. Many people get creeped out by this story, but are also quite glad to know who the girl is by the side of the road to Cazones. Next up at number 7 now, we have the Santa Paula Cemetery. This is said to be a very haunted cemetery near the city of Guadalajara 
era. The story dates back to 1882 and goes like this. One night a young couple put their 9 year old son Ignacio to bed. His family nickname was Nachito. Nachito slept with a light on as he was very afraid of the dark. He had two lit torches outside of his bedroom window and slept with the windows open. This particular night a storm hit and blew out the torches. The next morning his mother entered the room to find it was icy cold. She rushed to Nachito but found him dead. He had died from a heart attack due to his pathological fear of the dark when the torches went out. However, a rumor spread that Nachito's heart had actually exploded inside his chest and that his death was actually a curse or the work of demons. He was laid to rest in a cemetery and the strangeness that began with his death did not end quickly. The next morning his coffin was found lying on the ground next to his grave. The parents and locals were shocked and had it reburied but the next morning the same exact thing happened. It continued like this for 9 straight days. His parents began to think that the boy was so afraid of the dark he didn't want to be kept in the ground away from the light even in death. So they created a stone coffin that stood on pillars above the ground so that his tomb could always see sunlight. Ever since then people reported hearing and seeing a boy that matches Nachito's description wandering around at night. Others have seen mysterious balloons just hovering above the gravestones as if carried by a small child. Many people who hear this story actually go to visit Nachito's grave. Some hope they won't see the signs of him at night, but reports of his sightings continue to this day. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the Cadejo. This is a supernatural character from southern Mexican folklore. There are two types of this creature, the white and black Cadejo. They are dog-like creatures. The white one is said to be good, accompanying people home late at night. The black Cadejo is fear as an evil spirit. It does exactly the opposite. It tries to kill people walking alone at night. If the person survives the attack, it's because they are an idiot, apparently. Quite often a person is saved from the attack by the white Cadejo. The two will battle it out until the good Cadejo wins. It's a sight to behold. While they are dog-like creatures, they're often described as being much, much bigger than dogs. Some reports say they can be as big as cows. They have burning red eyes and goat's hooves. They lurk in graveyards and dark alleys, waiting for their victims to pass by. They have a distinct smell of concentrated urine and burning sulfur, if you can imagine that. People say they move in a very demonic nature with short, jerky movements. One thing to remember about the Cadejo is that its gaze can freeze you in place, at which point you can be easily attacked by the evil one. Next up at number 5 now we have La Mala Hora. This name translates to the evil hour or the evil one, either is a fitting description for this being. In parts of Mexico it's believed to be a wicked spirit or evil demon that wanders country roads after midnight, waiting to attack anyone who walks alone. It waits at crossroads, hoping for a lost traveller to pass by. For the people who have seen it, they fear the evil one more than the actual devil. It first appears as a large black lump swirling through the night air and changing shape. It shapeshifts quickly, getting bigger or smaller at will. People say it resembles a ghostly black shroud or a large black cotton ball. Nobody wants to see it though, for to do so will drive a person to insanity. The demon will try to hypnotize and paralyze people before attacking them. When it does, it rushes forward as a thick black smog, enveloping and suffocating them. The next morning, locals will find them dead at the crossroads and they'll know who is to blame. Next up, number four now, we have the Princess of Bufa. This story comes from the Carol de la Bufa, an area of forested hills and rocky cliffs on the southeast side of Guanajuato. There, locals say an enchanted princess lives at the peak of the mountain. They say that on Holy Thursdays for centuries, she will emerge from the mountain top to call out for a handsome and valiant man to rescue her by carrying her down to the altar in the nearby town. Once there, she will become a human and the town will be restored to its former glory as a booming mining town. However, as with many similar stories, there is always a catch. They say the man who rescues the princess must not be so stunned by her beauty that he cannot complete the journey. He must carry her calmly in his arms all of the way. He cannot look back or lose his step, especially when he starts hearing strange noises behind him. If he does turn around or stumble, the princess will turn into a vicious, hideous serpent and will devour him whole. People say this happens every year because the town has still not met its former glory. Will the snake princess claim victims like this forever? Moving on to number 3 now, we have the mannequin. In a store window in the city of Chihuahua, there stands a bridal mannequin that has become famous in the paranormal community. It's been there since 
since 1930 and at first glance it doesn't look so creepy but wait till you hear this. Soon after it was placed there locals noticed the mannequin bore an uncanny resemblance to the daughter of the woman who owned the store, Pascuala Esperanza. A rumour spread that this mannequin was actually the embalmed body of the daughter who had recently died on her wedding day after being bitten by a black widow spider. Of course the mother denied all of this but the legend took hold. People were convinced it was the body of the daughter. The resemblance and just how lifelike it looked were just too perfect. Sonia Bursiaga was a woman who worked in the store. She had to change the outfit twice a week and was quoted as saying, every time I go near Pasquala my hands break out in a sweat. Her hands are very realistic and she even has varicose veins on her legs. I believe she is a real person. Well I thought that sounded a little bit ridiculous until I saw the close up of her hands. Now I'm not so sure. I'm only sure that I'm never going anywhere near her. Moving on to number 2 now guys we have the island of dolls. If you head just south of Mexico City you can find an island that attracts tourists from all over the world. The whole thing is covered in creepy dolls of every shape and size. There is a famous story as to why. It said that a girl was found drowned in mysterious circumstances many years ago on the island. Her body was found by a man called Don Julian Santana Barrera. Shortly after he saw a floating doll nearby. He hung it to a tree as a sign of respect and as a way of helping her into the next life. However it didn't seem to work. Don Julian was apparently haunted by the spirit of the girl. He began hanging more dolls in an attempt to please her restless spirit. Then he realised what he had done and it was already far too late. He believed the dolls themselves were now possessed by the spirits of dead girls from all over the world. His friends say that he went mad, as if driven by an unseen force to continue what he started. After 50 years of doll hanging, Don Julian was found dead, drowned in the same area where the girl had died. Now locals believe that his spirit has joined the others on the island. People visit to honour him, the girl and the spirits of the others. However, most people don't stay too long and almost nobody would spend a night on the island of dolls. And finally at number 1 now we have the seventh son. This story comes from a remote area near Toledo. In the 19th century there was a boy who lived in a village. His name was Federico. He was the seventh son in his family. In fact his father was also the seventh son in his family. Locals believe that because of this he was endowed with dark occult powers. They say he had second sight and the ability to predict the future. Even more he had a natural gift for healing, curing any one of the their ailment with just a touch of his hand. Although he was kind, quiet and shy, the other kids hated him because they feared him. Overall the village wanted nothing to do with him. And so one night the village elders held a meeting to discuss what should be done about him. They voted to kill him and then destroy his body. That was said to be the only way the village could be kept safe from the dark forces he channeled. It led him to an abandoned shack in the woods. When his back was turned they pounced on him and bound him up. In a satanic ritual they stripped him, hung him from the roof and then lowered him into a vat of boiling oil. He didn't stop there though. He was still alive and screaming in pain and so they gouged out his eyes and hacked his body to bits. The parts were then put in a wooden barrel and dumped into the river. With that they were satisfied. The next day some villagers went to visit one of the elders. They knocked on his door but got no reply. As soon as they entered they stopped. There was the elder dead on the floor. His eyeballs were on his chest. His head had been crushed beyond all recognition. His eyes and feet had also been chopped off. On the ground in front of the body there was a message written in his blood. Innocent blood has been spilt. Now the guilty must die. After that day all the elders who were responsible for the boy's death began to die one by one. Their bodies always found in hideous ways. When the last one died there was another message written in blood. It read, Now I have been avenged. The guilty have paid their debt. Ooh. Okay, let's take a moment there. I think that ended on a very gory note. Is that the kind of thing that creeps you out in these videos or are you more into ghosts and stuff? Let me know what you find most scary about these kind of stories so I know what to look out for. It's okay if you say all of it. Also let me know which country you think we should do next, of course. I'm thinking more South American countries in the future. Thanks for watching this video guys. My name is Danny Burke and I'll be seeing you all in the next video. <laughs>